Today, more and more businesses and organizations are looking for ways to reduce their emissions. If you're a business owner who's looking to reduce your footprint, you may have heard of scope one, two, and three emissions. Today, we're diving into these scopes and what they represent and how your business can start tackling them. Welcome back everyone, I'm Casey, and this is Going Solar with Pivot Energy, where we cover all things solar energy, commercial solar, solar finance incentives, and community solar to understand three individual scopes and their importance. First, you need to know what emissions are. The term emissions generally refers to greenhouse gas emissions, the most well-known of which are carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide, N2O. What these gases share in common is their ability to trap heat in our atmosphere, creating a greenhouse House effect, which contributes to climate change. 2019 data from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency shows that the transportation of electricity and industry as the top emitters of carbon dioxide, it's likely that your business falls into or interacts with one of these three categories. This means that your efforts to reduce emissions can contribute directly to addressing some of the major contributions of climate change. With that in mind, when deciding where to focus your emission reductions efforts, it's important to reference three emission scopes, which have been set up by the Greenhouse Gas Protocol. Scopes 1, 2, and 3 emissions each categorize the origin of greenhouse gases and catalog where the emissions are created within a company's value chain. Scopes 1, 2, and 3 account for a company's direct emissions or their internal operation and indirect emissions from their suppliers and customers. If your company has established ESG goals, works with government contracts, or is particularly environmentally minded, you've probably run into these goals before when engaging in a process called carbon accounting. We'll define scopes one, two, and three individually here in a sec. But first, let's quickly touch on the importance of understanding your business or organization's emissions. As a business owner or leader in your organization, understanding your emissions helps you address the impact and choices that you make within your value chain. Breaking it up by scope makes it easier to identify areas in which greenhouse gas emissions can be reduced now and in the future. As I mentioned before, if you're watching this video, you might be familiar with the term ESG, AKA environmental, social, and governance. ESG goals like reducing carbon emissions emissions and increasing company diversity are quickly holding more weight. Investors and consumers alike are applying more non-financial factors when analyzing risks and opportunity. So incorporating emission reduction strategy and targets into your ESG goals is crucial. In fact, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission recently proposed a new rule called the Climate Risk Disclosures Act. The rule would require public companies to provide detailed reporting of their climate-related risks, including emissions and net zero transactions mission plans. This potential change means that it's more important than ever to get ahead on your ESG goals today. If you want to learn more about ESG, check out our video, Meet Your Company's ESG Goals with Solar. It's linked in the description below with other videos that I'll mention today. Now let's get to some scope one emissions. Scope one emissions encompasses your company's direct emissions. These can include the emissions from the vehicles your company owns and uses to make deliveries, emissions from running the refrigerator units as one of your warehouses, and of course, emissions from manufacturing your products or services, like producing steel or laying concrete. Scope one emissions also include any environmental damage created by things like oil leaks, refrigerator leaks, or chemical spills. Incidentally, scope one emissions are some of the easiest to reduce. In a minute, I'll cover some of the ways that you can get started, but First, if you've learned something so far, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out when we post. Moving on to scope two. These emissions encompass those produced from the power that your business purchases, typically from your local utility. Every time you flick on a light switch, plug in machinery, or dial up a thermostat, you pay your utility for power. Now, if your utility source is 100% renewable energy, well, that's fantastic news. Unfortunately, that's not the standard today. And your utility mix usually has a lot of room for improvement in its power mix. Last but not least is scope three emissions. Scope three is quite a bit different though and significantly harder to calculate. Scope three emissions are those in the least control of your business. Indirect emissions from both upstream and downstream of your operations. Since they're created beyond the supply chain by the employees and customers, companies are not directly responsible for these emissions. On the upstream side, this includes everything from the emissions released when employees commute into the office to the raw materials that go into your supply chain. On the downstream side, the primary focus of this area is what happens when your products after they are delivered to your customer. Does your customer reuse or recycle the packaging material that your product is shipped in? Are the bicycles that you sell being used as an alternative transportation method instead of driving a car? Scope 3 emissions 
are very expansive. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see an in-depth video about scope 3 emissions. Since scope 3 is significantly harder to calculate than scopes 1 or 2, companies can usually decrease these indirect emissions by creating more eco-friendly products and shipping materials, reducing waste in operations and disposal, and offering customer recycling programs for end-of-life products. For scopes 1 and 2, since they're more direct, they're easier to calculate. Luckily, there are actually several ways to reduce direct emissions, one of which is drum roll, please solar energy. Today, business owners have options, and not all of them involve installing on-site solar. Adding solar panels to one or all of your facilities is just one way to support clean energy and reduce scope to emissions. Other clean energy options that do not require on-site solar include subscribing to Community Solar, signing an off-site virtual power purchase contract, or purchasing SRECs. Whether you are directly purchasing power for your facility with owned or leased solar, or financially supporting Community Solar Garden or an off-site project, you can lower your business's carbon footprint. Solar also has benefits beyond the host site or customer. You can learn more about how solar helps communities and the environment in our video, The Positive Impact of Solar Energy on the Environment and Local Communities. When you are ready to learn more about your solar options, take a look at our other videos, Community Solar versus Rooftop Solar, and Power Purchase Agreements versus Virtual Power Purchase Agreements. You can find them linked below in the description. If you are ready to take advantage of solar to help reduce your emissions and hit your ESG goals, let us help. Pivot has a long track record of helping businesses make the switch to clean energy and our own set of stringent ESG goals. So we understand what's important and what will make an impact. So whether you want to install solar on your own property, sign a PPA or VPPA contract, subscribe to Community Solar, or work on your own ESG goals, we can help. We're a turnkey solar provider that takes care of everything. Learn about what it's like to work with us in what to expect from a commercial solar developer, Pivot Energy, and Community Solar for Business. If you have any questions about how your business can address scopes one, two, and three emissions, leave a comment down below or head to pivotenergy.net. We want to make sure that you get your questions answer. You can also reach out to me directly by using my email listed in the description and my team of solar experts and I will get right back to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Going Solar with Pivot Energy. We'll see you next time.